Crystal Jordan, be honest and myself, Kevin Davis. We are Music Love Life. And welcome to another episode. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Yes, indeed. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? Well, am I only one with good spirits? Well, you just Damn keep getting, wrong with y'all. every week is different. Like, you're, we never know what you're going to do. You're getting, I mean, you're getting more animated, I guess is the right, animated? It was definitely animated. animated. Yeah, it was a little bit. Well, you think I should be more like Russell Simmons? Just nah, man. Thank y'all for coming out. God, no, you saying no. monotone? No. Per, it was perfect, Kevin. Do we have uh, a guest today? Do we have a guest today hanging out? Hello. With us? Hi, Kevin. Hi, person sitting next to me. <laughs> What's up? When did you get here? Um, about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tammy Goodwin, and Tammy is finally here to talk to us about finances, money, and credit, all that stuff. So we're going to get into some, some we're going to ask Tammy some finances, very intricate money questions. and yeah. credit. Yeah, all of that. Do you have okay. any? The most important thing. A little of each. <laughs> a little of each. We got a little of each. <laughs> I'm pinching. Which is more important to have? What do you? Would you rather have a lot of? I seen. I've seen this in, this uh, Instagram meme going saying, "Do you? Would you rather have like six hundred thousand dollars or an eight hundred credit score?" And I'm like six hundred thousand dollars because I can have a great credit score yeah. using the tools that Tammy taught me with Absolutely. the six hundred thousand. I have close to eight hundred credit score. So good for you. I have I'm good for you, be honest. Credit very, score. very good, very good. Right now, I'm fluctuating between 744 and 791. Well, you. I made some. What is that on Credit Karma? Um, well, different things. I, I use my bank. I always, I always use all of the sources that I have. So I'm gonna tell you, like I tell all the people, you love that score. But if you ever go to get a house, it's always lower, and it's okay. That's oh, fine. Wow. I yeah. already got a house. I already yeah. got cars. But it's so. just always lower because they are looking for different things. That's why. Yeah. Payment history well, type You stuff. did say Credit Karma. Like, you was ready to shoot that one out the sky. Oh, the Credit Karma be like 40 points difference than a mortgage person. Oh, man. So people yeah. people are very that sucks. They think, oh, I have like a 680. I'm like, no, you don't. You got like a 640. But we'll work it from there. Wow. Mm-hmm. So well, then the, the the only way to really know is to go to all three and get a specific uh, detailed no, one from each? The best site to go to is creditcheckstotal.com. It's, that's the best site mm. because they're only about 15 points off. So what I normally have my clients do is I have them go pull their credit on that site, minus 15 points from each of them because it'll give you all three credit reports, and then we go from there. Does that does that hurt you if you pull your credit? Nope. From- when you pull your own credit, mm-hmm. it's considered a soft pull. Gotcha. So it doesn't take any points. And I'm just going to say this. There is a myth. Mm-hmm. People say, oh, well, once one person pulls your credit, you have 15 days or 30 days to let other people pull your credit. It ain't a myth. It's a lie. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. When anybody pulls your credit and it's a hard pull, for every inquiry they pull, you lose one point. Oh. So a lot of people, when they go to a car dealership, Ooh. what mm. the car dealership does <laughs> is they shop your credit out. Right. And so if they shop it out to three people and each person pulls three reports, mm-hmm. that's nine points right there. Mm. What about if you do something like Lending Tree? Is that one time or is that multiple times? Lending Tree pulls three because they're going to pull Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So that's three points. How many points do you have starting off? It d- depends on have. how strong your credit oh, score is. Oh, you mean as far as your... your yeah, it's the, from your that, score. it's the points that are subtracted from your credit score. Stop playing with my score like that. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And I know these things because I took my score and about eight other people. I had friends and family members, and I played with our scores. Mm-hmm. And I did the same exact thing to see if I would get the same exact outcome. Right. So I would know how to help people to tell them to fix their scores. Wow. Hmm. Well, we're going to get into that. Yeah, um, we're going to That's going to be the meat that. of our show today. So if you have problems with credit or finances or anything like that, this will be the show that you'll want to put on Rewind and... Listen to a few times because this stuff gets kind of, I think, it gets kind of dense. Yeah. There's there's some spaces where it gets confusing and it there's is. a lot of information. Yeah. But luckily, this is recorded so you can go back and, you know. Listen again. We're actually yeah. doing something good. We're doing edutainment today as opposed to just our regular foolish shenanigans. No, I kind of feel like I'm I'm pretty educational on a weekly basis. Oh, absolutely. I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay. See? All right. Something like that. Well, do we need to get people to vote and write in again? No, because you I, always have your people. I feel like Be Honest think- <laughs> has his people 
that reach out. You know, I just definitely feel like they do. I do want to say, I, I just, you know, I went to to um, the horse races today, and I want to shout out Melissa and Amelia. Amelia listens to the show, and Amelia is actually Hispanic. Okay, but now we're not Mexican, right? She, I think she is. Okay, well then say that. Let's just all say Hispanics aren't Mexican. Let's just call yeah, it. I'm just saying, but they're all. But it's all. It, but it still applies across the board. And what? What applies? What are we saying? No, I'm just saying Hispanic includes. No, but what's your next statement? I'm just saying that she. We have listeners that are out there that enjoy the show. Hola. And let. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're not offending people on a regular basis. I, you you could have said that more Amelia. white. Hola. You you debunked the the Mexican uh, well, that's body bingo. That's I continue to, and I will continue to debunk it. So then, what is the problem? True. We've debunked it. See, I'm not when I'm when I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, we're not sure that I'm wrong. Crystal went to one wedding, and she's not really sure they were Mexican. How did you know? Did you ask? That well, they were well. I can't say. I I, I could kind of tell. You could kind of tell. Go to the wedding. I happened to breeze by. Right. I was what? breezing by. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard them. I heard them speaking, and I. You, you know, know. Do you know the Mexican Mexican dialects? It's different. From, okay, but yeah. it could have been Guatemalan. It was not. How do you know? It was not. They didn't look Guatemalan. That's a different, a different, a different look. It is a different look. You know. You know. Can you tell Asians apart too? So be honest. Yes. What are you? What am I? <laughs> uh, black and white. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. He's he's more. Because he's, you he's look kind of Dominican over there. Yeah. White than black. Yeah. My mm-hmm. wife is Dominican and black, but not me. I'm just mm-hmm. regular old, regular regular black and white. Regular regular mm-hmm. black and white. See, yeah. If, if your beard if it was thinner, if you had your goatee thinner, <laughs> you definitely be Hispanic. Yeah, Puerto mm-hmm. Rican. That's cool. Dominican. It's whatever. Easy. But we're not talking about um, Hispanic men's bodies. We're talking about. You know, I don't have to say it. You know. <laughs> you know out there. You already know. Yeah. Well, in any case, <laughs> <laughs> one of your brothers, well, uh, Drake released his... Um, oh, one of my brothers. Yeah. yeah well, right. he's he's also a regular, regular black. Well, he's Jewish and black. Same thing. Right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a difference? Educate me. I mean, Jewish is a, is a religion. I'm aware. That they pretend is a race. Well, that's the, the lying Jews. Because, you know, there's some Jews that are not real Jews. It's all beige to me. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like the black Israelites. That, mm-hmm. that, that's, yeah. Those are the authentic Jews, right? Uh, I don't no? know. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not. Eggshell. <laughs> so right. did, you, did, you oh. hear, did you hear Drake's album? I no. did not hear Drake's album. Well, he's just failing on all types of points. Uh, you know what? I don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> I'm not a Drake fan. I, I've never said that I was, though. You had his back because he was yeah. like clap. Uh, He's no, the, no, no, you you called him the, the clap back clap king. back king. I never said I was a Drake fan. They're, those are those are diss records. I'm not talking about the, but why the are soft you not? singing stuff. Why would you? And he only really did that once, and that was with Mick Mill. So what else? <laughs> no, but the, those times have been official. I, I don't listen to Drake. Time. I don't listen to Drake because there's way too much estrogen in the writing. If you listen you carefully, you that? can hear the tap dance. What is that? What is that about? Because I've I've seen so many guys saying that Drake makes music just for women. How is that? How is that? Nice for what? what? Titty, like nice this? for what? Yeah. I mean, okay, first of all, that's one song. He does give us a good anthem, but I mean, that's just smart marketing. Women are the biggest consumers. We're the biggest rate listeners Y'all on Y'all are the best at everything, obviously. We you keep, are. You keep beating I'm us glad up. that you know we're the EST. Duh. Not Not true, but we'll go with it for this argument. I mean, no. Actually, scientifically, we are the biggest consumers. Women are the one that purchase is it things. Science, for the men. Crystal. It is. <laughs> yes. Oh, they're statistically. Statistically. Well, I'm, okay. I'm, shall I pull it up? Shall I pull which it up? Which one is it? Biology, chemistry. Which which science is it? You know what? <laughs> Point is, you. we buy we buy more um, bull crap music. Whatever. Yeah. Period. Yeah. We yeah. are the biggest consumers. So why wouldn't that would actually be smart on his part to hey. make music for and women? And no man has ever made a record that men enjoy too. You're right. He let's does just, make music let's that just men stop, enjoy. No, let's just stop making music for men. He doesn't make any men. music that men enjoy. Not you really. Are so full of no, it. Not nobody, really. Nobody makes male targeted music. It doesn't. Right. Obviously, Pusha T does. Le- Pusha T does not cater to females. There are rappers that don't cater to females. Um, yeah, but they're not like popular because we're we're more be important. A, if, if you want to be a pop star, because because Drake's Drake raps, but he's a pop star. He he makes Bone Thugs and Harmony sang, but they didn't sing for women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a different. It was a different it's thing. The thuggish, ruggish you don't, ball no, was not I, for Matter women. of fact, out of all of those basketball Never. games that he be at, none of those athletes are listening to Drake in the locker room to get hype. I don't believe that. 
Let's test that with some athletes next week. Yo, anybody, any athlete that listens to Drake <laughs> in the locker room before you go out, I guarantee you, you lose that game. I guarantee it. Can we please have someone that plays ball, even if it's a pickup ball? You can't even listen to back to back like that. Not, you know. Oh, who do you listen to you before up? you would before you get ready to play somebody? You gotta have like Wu Tang, some <laughs> MOP. MOP will have you killing somebody right. on the court. Right. That's you need that fire. <laughs> MOP has not never Drake's made. MO. I don't think MOP has ever made a woman record. No. Ever. Ever. No. Ever. No love song. Every song has None. Ashy Knuckles. Every single one of them. <laughs> oh my god. And he up <laughs> Oh Crush that fool right. Oh And then you kidnap him. Is, that the only right? thing, yeah. is that the only thing You can listen to before it? What about Jeezy Or like um, I don't know who Jeezy else? You can listen to Jeezy Okay Rick Ross Some stuff Rick Ross Rick yeah. Ross makes music for women mm. Maybach music Is usually for women he, But you know Half of his album Is like this smooth Live band yeah. feel, yeah. and so, then the other stuff is trap music. So then, why then do men listen to Rick Ross but not Drake? That's what I I'm saying. I think men do listen no, to no, Drake. No, sing. I mean, straight men. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear the album? The Drake album? Yes. Yeah, I heard it. Okay, and what did you think? Vanilla. What does that mean? Yeah. So I heard that one side or side A is is rap and side B is R and B. Is that true? Yeah. Is that is that effective? I, you know, I just, I listened straight through. So it's a lot of songs. I think I've been like tainted because of all these short albums that have come out. So it was like 17 or 18. It was just a lot of songs. Yeah, he like, he like raps on 12 songs and then sung on 13. And, but all of them were like just, I don't know. They were just so bland. Yeah. No. What was the last was good bland. double album though? It was a lot of good. He had a, he had good lyrics. He great. Pop. Drake is known for good lyrics. All eyes on me. Yeah. All eyes what about, on me. What about the Biggie double disc? Life after death. That did come out at. Well, that came out like six months apart. But okay. Kevin, have you forgotten <laughs> Sasha Fierce and? Uh, oh please. Oh yeah. Beyonce. Wow, Kevin. Have you what? forgotten? Yeah. Whoa. Double disc. Whoa. Yep. Not listening I'm a, to that. A diva. In a, I'm in the Beehive, yeah. but I'm not listening to that. In the, Crystal in the locker room. Crystal That's last not my pre workout. But I, I didn't say we just said double double disc. Right, Crystal. Last week he denounced hotepism, and now look at this. Yes, he has. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. How dare he disrespect right. Queen B with some Pac and Biggie? How can I sleep? <laughs> Goodness, they're coming for you, man. I have betrayed I just my hope, brethren. You don't even. I mean, do you even know who you are? I hope they don't come for you while you're here. That's who all. Who are I you? I'm, because you did You know it's 2018 Too much wild stuff is happening And I'm, I'm questioning it all It seems that way Because you did You did induct Kim Kardashian Into the Black Hall of Fame Oh uh, she's official I though. didn't call it In the Black Hall of Fame You gave her a black mm -hmm. card that was, that was And said that much. you appreciate That black people Appreciated hey, look, her She gets a black card Because she got a She need to do stuff For Kanye Because Kanye ain't right but I she, mean, so she might every... have to come in and drop off some paperwork. I'm just but saying. But are we giving black, black women uh, black uh, uh, extra credit for taking care of their men? Have we been doing that? Or are we just doing it for yes, the Armenian absolutely. ones? Absolutely, no. Just the if, Armenian ones. If a black mm, woman, I'm not saying no. that. I mean, what are you saying? Y'all credit where it's due. If you doing it, then do it. But Kim's doing it and complaining about it. Any black woman that wants to take care of their man. Do so, and we'll You're give gonna you get credit. extra points for that. But I, but, but y'all don't do that the, kind of stuff. They tend to give the Armenian ones extra points. Y'all don't do that kind of stuff, except for thugs and people that don't deserve it. You don't do it for the guys that really deserve to get <laughs> taken care true. of. That's not true. Yes, so it ridiculous. is ridiculous. Yes, it I'm is. I'm so sick of the good guy myth. Men saying that good guys finish last. Which, it's so where, where ridiculous. They finish? Where are they finish? It's not last. It what, just depends. Next to last. <laughs> no, it's back not. in the pack. No, it's 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 in the. They just come in third, and that's okay. Well, third is not last. If you ain't Whatever. first, you're last. R Ricky that Bobby. Is last. It's not the. There's not. Women don't dislike good guys. Can you, what do you think, Tammy? Do you think women, all women, just dislike good guys? No, exactly. You, I think you they, the wrong. I think they just like the bad ones better. There you go. Well, she mm -hmm. tricked the word into you, Tammy. She did. No, she no, got you me. did. <laughs> I don't think. I don't. Th how, why do you think we like the bad ones better? Well, I mean, is it fast? A money? lot of times, you like. A lot of times, people like the bad ones better because they think that. It's more exciting until it becomes a problem. Until it becomes a problem. Yep. Yeah. It is and more exciting, times, right? But a lot of times, well, not necessarily. A lot of times they don't give a good guy a chance because they don't know. Because a good guy might just need a good woman to yeah. teach him how to have fun. 
Well, then too. Wow, sometimes here we go. This is getting this is getting very to teach them how to have fun. <laughs> but you know what? What I think is sometimes good. You can because I've done this before. You can look at a guy and think he's a good guy, and so you underestimate that he really has the same modus operandi as the bad guy. He just doesn't have as much swag doing it. So it's like good guys cheat too. They're just lame, and so it just it it. It what? still happens. What, yeah. what book did you read? Have you it's been on Madame Noir? Good guys, no. good guys cheap Have, too. They're just lame. Right. Yeah, that is the, that is the headline, ladies. Because you men are men, and there's no such thing as good guys and bad guys. They all do the same thing. I feel wins. like you'd be on Derek Jackson page just watching all the videos. <laughs> Whatever, I do not. Just you agree, like, 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 like. No, like. I don't. But I'm mm. saying, but there definitely are that. good guys. I'm one of them. What I'm just saying that you oh. can't. But do, 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 <laughs> that's great. I'm sorry, Ouch. awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. As we see here to, as at, long as you all think the so. time, your outlook on life is much like a guy that is not a good guy. It's what do you same mean? Thing. You're, How? Just, you're just wrapped in a less aggressive package. I think I'm actually very aggressive, I'm, but I'm not lame. I said you're wrapped in a less aggressive package. I didn't say you were aggressive or not. I don't know. But your package is not... You don't look she like said, the she look you look. She said oh, you're a beige right. stuff. You, you look like an R&B singer. She said oh. tote. That's what you're trying, that's what you're trying to say. I'm just saying he doesn't look like he's a dangerous guy. Don't like, let the curls mm-hmm. fool you. That's how, that's how I feel. She said you an easy win. Yeah, okay. I didn't say that. <laughs> you're going to you gonna walk that. over here and you're going to limp back. <laughs> <laughs> There's some great the guys strap, out there. Right? Get There's the some strap. Great guys. Y'all always, oh God, get the strap. Y'all <laughs> always try to do like like good guys really get the credit. They they don't. They don't, they don't get the. I saw a meme earlier this week. Uh, somebody had posted talking about I can't do no soft ass man. I talk back and I don't listen. See. I you have know a what? problem, but you uh-huh. know what? Though? That and ain't... that's what y'all do. You no. talk back and you don't listen. That's not the man though. Because sometimes, what do, a, huh? what do you mean? It's not the man. It's not the man. If you talk back and you don't listen, she is crazy. That has nothing to do with him. Uh, that has nothing to do with him. Yeah, it has that to do with, has to do with you changing yeah. who you are. That has to do with her dad. That's she probably your, didn't have a daddy. That's your character. Well, that's a. She probably didn't have a daddy. Yeah, because I have a great man. Get it? Great man. Is he a good guy? He's a great guy. Is he a lame? See that ring? You see that ring? That's he, a rock of Gibraltar. Is he a lame? It is beautiful. No, he ain't lame. Crystal said all good guys are lame. No, no, I, no, no. no. Now, let said, me tell you. When I met him, he was a yippie. A yippie? Yuppie. Oh, yuppie. yuppie. Okay. Yuppie. So, you know, he was dressed. Yeah. He was all Spenders. preppy, had on boat shoes. Yep, he was yeah. all preppy. Had his collar off. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm wilding him out a little bit. She, yeah, y'all she y'all pass by them dudes every so day. So, he, he, uh-huh. ta- he got a neck tattoo now? No. You got him a neck no, tattoo? Tattoos. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to get him a neck tattoo for 20 years. He got worried. He started smoking weed and getting face tats. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. <laughs> face tats. Why, why are so many young people getting face tattoos? I know. Uh, people. What I don't gonna... know what the future holds for those people. <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm willing to bet they're not going to have a good future. But, well, Seriously, well, if you have a face tattoo, I don't know. 2018. Hey, somebody with a face tat going to run for Congress? No, I'm willing I, to bet. I'm, no, I don't know. You well. see people. I see people working in um, with jobs years. with covered in tattoos. Where usually what that wasn't what job. Well, not you're not I, in corporate America. You no. might see it, but they're gonna have they, they, they gonna, gonna have, have it right. closed. Right, right, right. A sleeve under a sleeve. Because yeah. yeah. I know an attorney. I mean, he literally has them his neck and everything, mm-hmm. but he covers it up. Yeah, right. right. But out in public, that's like, when I saw it. Why right. are you wearing a sweater in the summer? It's because he got to cover it up. Right. So yeah. where where were you seeing these workers with t- face tattoos? Not not a, face tattoos. I'm just saying. But but it used to be where Walmart. you had a, if you had a <laughs> if you had a tat if you had tattoos at all, you wouldn't be able to work in places where like like. Enterprise or something like that, where you know people are actually seeing you doing customer service. But right. now that you know the laws, have, the rules have kind of you mean to relax you got a tattoos. Bit. You can't you can't work at a rental car place. I don't think it so. used to be like that. I don't I think it's not anymore. I think well, it disqualifies you. The reason why is because everybody, the customer service in places have gone down. Well, that's because. True. They don't pay enough, so they have to hire the people who have the tattoos. <laughs> Why do women think that that little behind the ear tattoo is hidden? That's not I hidden. I don't think so. I don't care how big your ear is. It's not hidden. We see it. You know what? But there's <laughs> only a handful of corporations that have good customer service anyway. We can name them right now. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Publix. Yeah. The Goodwin Publix. team. There who? you go. The Goodwin team. I will okay. say Enchanted PR, but we've had some trouble. <laughs> You because we've had some trouble. No, not me, but hey. I've you know. I've had Rare Sonas Media has Rare Sonas Media has top notch A one quality oh, customer service. Oh, this shameless plugging here. <laughs> I, I, I am I a customer mind, service. But, you know, it is. I, uh, it's him. I go above and beyond. And anytime that I get any request, it's handled as, as quickly as possible with care and a smile. <laughs> we believe that. All right, so 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 we can't really talk about All Drake because what do, you, what do y'all think? Was it a good album overall? I I 
I liked it. Okay. I did. I but liked it. But you're a woman. It. Kevin, what do you think? <laughs> Should I shut that down? <laughs> it's just, it was it was all right. Tammy, did you listen? I'm being real. It was all did right. Did you hear anything? No. No. Yeah. I'm not pressed, honestly. Music is, has gotten to the point where I can wait weeks. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. not like... It's not like the same as it used to be because you well, first of all, we get so much of it. It's so much. You know what I mean? And it's it's from different places. So I walked miles to get new edition, any heartbreak. Me too. Yeah. Miles. Well, not miles, but it was like two and a half miles. I was super excited. Yep. It was a cassette, you had to break the thing <laughs> off yep. of it. Oh. But the music back in the yeah. day was yeah, a lot worked. better than the music today. I yeah. walked, Tammy. Did you walk yeah. for new edition any heartbreak? No. Was that a good album to you, though? It was a great album. You see what I'm saying? It's still a great any album. Heartbreak, yeah. Kevin, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Definitely. See, it's, it's, it's amazing. I think I stole that cassette. We all know the songs. We all know the moves. The, yeah. Who was even doing that back then? Who stole cassettes back then? What? You can't steal. They had the big thing on it so that you couldn't even get it out the store. Like, you couldn't. It was a huge. Oh, please. They stole cassettes back then. <laughs> right. They, yeah, they right. dropped hey. it in their pants. <laughs> really? <laughs> but when you walk Michael out, Bivens you're going to get the mine. <laughs> But <laughs> right, so. well, you guys know that New Edition is going on t- going on the road, but it's Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike without Ralph. Like he they've fin- been able he to finally like, broke away from them. <laughs> yeah, the, well, we'll see because he'll probably be, be back. They have done so many variations with that group. Like mm-hmm. I don't think any other group BBD, has done that. BBD, mm-hmm. yeah. and then you had and then they had Ralph and um. Then, well, they and then Bobby was on his own. They Bobby was on his own. Then we Johnny put Gale. Johnny in, yeah. took yeah. Ralph out. Yeah, well, not Ralph out. Was it Ralph? Yeah, I think it is Ralph. No, it was Bobby. It was Bobby. It was when Bobby RBRM. went out. It was when Bobby they took went Bobby out, out yeah. and put Ralph in. Now yeah. they've taken Ralph out and put Bobby back. Because for I mean for a long time Bobby was definitely by himself. But I bet the show is still good though. Of course, because they're because I mean it's show, the same songs. Yeah. But let me be for real. I think Ralph need to grow up, and get over his issues, whatever it is, man. Go on, sing with the fellas. Hey man, just sing he's with always the fellas, been man. the emotional just sing one. With the fellas, I mean he's a man with sensitivity. He's always been the emotional <laughs> one. Slim didn't even go on tour with One Twelve one time. When yeah, it, when yeah, it came man, back. y'all it's, fucking it up. You got, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be. We real. were talking about that. Like ego gets in the way of so many things. Like people allow their egos to get in the way of of success. Like. I don't know if you guys know about the show, The Queen's Court, that co- nope. that comes on with, well, it used to come yeah. on with Kaya and mm-hmm. T.S. Madison. Mm-hmm. And Never watched that. T.S. Madison. Are we talking about a different gender person? Yes. Wow. Okay. How did you know that? The you T.S. said T.S. Oh, so you just automatically thought transsexual? It's odd because somebody in the Slack room the other day posted a clip talking about some guy named Calvin or something that was on the show. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what it was until I clicked on it. They said, look, go to the nine minute, to 15 minute marker. And so we're watching this and this guy is saying that he's transgendered. However, he still has sex with women and he has four kids. And yeah, it was, it was wild. <laughs> oh so God. that's why I know that when that name, you say that, and they're like, oh yeah. my God, why is this following me? What does this mean? <laughs> but they had, they had a huge Facebook audience, got into an argument, I guess involving Monique, ironically, and and Kaya quit, and then so so now they're both split. I mean, it just happens all the time. So at Queens Court, mm-hmm. mm, I don't know. I mean, they, but it was. I mean, you have a lot of followers, and you have a lot of engagement. That's the opportunity to make money. Mm, the Queen. All Kaya does is talk about people. She. It's just like <laughs> Kaya and the Azalea Banks. That's all they do. Who is Kaya? Every about, time I hear them, my neck, the my rapper back. Kaya? Because, yes. Right. That <laughs> don't Kaya. do that. Don't don't right. do that. No, no, no. She Act she like you don't she's know popping Kaya. on IG. Yeah. I've seen or not only know if it's IG. I've seen some videos of her though, like just. Going off on people. Yeah, she does. She does. Okay, so what? What? What about Lee Daniels and and um Dame Dash? You guys see that video? Lee I Daniels did. had it coming. He knew what it was. Yeah, he call my ass. You knew you owed that nigga. The look money. on his face said it all. You knew it you did. owed that nigga. Why money. wouldn't he pay? How do you? First of all, how do you borrow two million dollars? And I know you know it's a different playing field. So, but first that's of a, all, that's how do you loan? Two million dollars. Is that ever? Because you can ask to borrow it, but I can clearly say no. <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's ever a time? Because obviously in entertainment, there is the opportunity to make millions of dollars. Do you think there's ever a good time to loan someone two million dollars? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would have to be a business investment. That's what it was. I mean, that's it was. What it was. I don't yeah. think it was a loan. That's why okay. people, people keep saying loan, but I okay. think it was. This was an investment because there was a, a a plan for return. He was supposed to give them a percentage of the next few movies or whatever, and just clearly decided not to. <laughs> that's an investment, and to me, he should have went to court. But I guess he was like, "I'm gonna try to handle this." You know what I'm saying? Well, Dame Dash is a, is a and, non-traditional, right? You know, mm-hmm. he's more. He better of start getting with the traditional. He better, better go to court. Yeah. Well, he, your money. He approached him in a very but, well. No, we're lucky that. Dame Dash did not do a traditional ass whooping. Is what we did. <laughs> yeah, because gay people can that. fight. 
Uh, no, because I think I don't know. I think Lee was a, is a little bigger than him. I think by late, Lee was like, "Yo, Ain't brother, worry about brother, come Lee see Daniels. me, come see me in my office, brother." He wasn't talking. I like, don't think that. I don't think that. I think the person who <laughs> is owed the money has more aggression and more adrenaline, and they're probably gonna whoop. Yeah, him. until they get hit one time, then it's like, uh oh, he starts he so starts doing that windmill. Saying, he starts doing that windmill, and it's over. Oh, <laughs> be honest, and suggesting. Hey, it could have went there though, because he did check him in public in front of everybody. <laughs> right. Yo, uh, Dame Dash. Yeah, 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 it was on stage. It's like it was on stage. Lee the video, you could just hear right. snippets of what Lee he was Daniels talking. Lee Daniels was not going to come at him like that. Like, they're just he two couldn't. different types of people. He could not know. That not, was, exactly. He's not from that He's world. not built like that. that mm-hmm. I'm, we're thankful, Damon. <laughs> we're thankful that you didn't embarrass the shit out of Lee Daniels. <laughs> I like Dame, but I'm voting on the windmill in that fight. Sorry. <laughs> well, you you think that wrist is going? Yes, because it, it's, it's it's rapid. It's a lot of wrist. <laughs> it's a lot of wrist going. It's like rapid a paddle boat. Well, no, but Lee, Lee Daniels has come nah. and said that he he need that he, he. I guess it was a reality check, and he's he was wrong. Nah. But he's done. He actually is is one of the culprits behind the whole Monique debacle because mm-hmm. he owes her as well. But no, nah, she tripped on that. She did. She was supposed to do her. That's that's part of. Promoted a movie Well but He did tell her That they were gonna He he told they were gonna Give her money for it though He should have yeah. said that Well okay but look that's, I'm glad that he agreed To pay him back though Well if, hopefully He'll see. get the money yeah, he, he agreed yeah. originally yeah. But, but <laughs> that's That's way above our pay grade Let's let's talk about Loaning people money though Right What do you How do you guys feel About loaning money Personally I Don't mind loaning money I don't like loaning A little bit of money If I'm gonna loan money It has to be kind of A bigger number Don't ask me to borrow $20 If you need $300 That's different to me don't waste my time with twenty because that means what? Because when somebody asks you to borrow twenty dollars, like I need some gas to get across. No, I'm no. Stop He's wasting my time. You're making. You're making. Yes, I'll get somebody three hundred dollars before I give them twenty. Well, I don't loan money. <laughs> but if I did, I would not expect it back either. This is that's that's yeah. the yeah. that's my attitude. I yeah. don't loan money. What I do is if somebody asks me for money. I give it to them. Mm-hmm. In my mind, it's gone. Yeah, and I'm giving it to them. If they give it back, it's great because then I just recycle it. Yeah, right? but I don't loan. Well, I'm adopting that. I had a bad experience loaning someone very close to me some money, and it just it just didn't go right. It just did not go right. And I think that people can we talk about how much? It was it was more than I should have loaned them. So we're talking more than a stack. It was it was more than I should more have loaned than two them. stacks. It was it was money that I had put up for something specific, and Ooh. that's another thing I, know, I I I've learned. Like, don't take out of your savings to loan someone. But I was trying to help that person, and I thought, you know what I mean, things, mm-hmm. but. Don't know from now on if I can't give it to him, and I wouldn't give that much money to somebody unless I, you know, money wasn't an issue. If I'm going to give you money, I'm just going to, I'm I'm not going to look for it back. But I also I definitely want something in return. So you are gonna work for that? <laughs> should you, you ever work for it? Should you ever loan money you don't you have? Do. You gonna cut some grass no. or something? Because that's that's money you didn't have. That was that was actually already spent money, right? Right, right. Yeah. So was, you really didn't have that money to right. loan. Yeah. So right. I don't I don't know that you should ever loan money. Yeah, that I, you don't I have. learned a lesson. I would never. What was money I was putting up towards something, and so yeah. I wasn't going to use it right then, but I was definitely going to use it later. Yeah. And that per, you know they you know they it, they paid it back in most of it, not all of it, but they it was dripped an, it. It, yeah. So. But it just taught me a lesson not to do that. You yeah. know what I mean? I think sometimes, you, you know, we all want to help people. I yeah. have friends that call and it's like, can I just, I'm going to give it back in two weeks. I got a check coming in and, and that check doesn't come. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and this is just, you just never know. So that's probably not, I get it now why people say don't loan something unless you can afford to, to, get, to not yeah. have it come back. Somebody asked me one time to get a cash advance on my credit card to loan the money. Oh, First wow. of all, I don't know if, if, I know Tammy knows this, but oh. a cash advance on a credit card, the interest rate is big. No matter what your interest rate on your card is, they're going to kill you on interest. Right. It just depends on, on who the, the credit comeback. card company is. Well, the ones that I know of, y'all try to kill somebody. I've, ne- I've never done a cash advance. Okay, mm-hmm. speak about that. So what is what is the difference and how does so that work? So there's some credit card companies who, like businesses, like mm-hmm. people who have businesses, actually, they Ramsey would have a fit for me saying this, but actually people who have businesses, credit cards can be helpful mm-hmm. if you need to float money. Okay. Because you have like Citibank, Barclays, Chase, mm-hmm. um, those three are really good for giving you money, 0% interest. So you can get, but, and if you take money off the card, they charge you a one-time fee mm. of 3%. So okay. you, and they give you 18 months to pay it back. 
So That's you think bad. you can take a loan from yourself mm-hmm. for three percent? So if you're borrowing five thousand dollars, it's only one hundred fifty bucks. That's that's really good. Right, that's mm-hmm. cheap. Right. right, instead of going somewhere else where you're getting compound interest, where you're having to pay on it every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but but if you do it, you it's all about being responsible. You just have to make sure you. I always tell people you got to have an exit plan. Right. And it can't be in your head. It has to be written on a piece of paper. Right. Because you got to say how you're going to pay it back. Dave, Dave Ramsey is calling. Should I answer? <laughs> I'm going to decline. Decline. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Dave Ramsey's that guy, though. That's how I got out of debt. That's how we got the out of debt. The debt snowball thing. Mm-hmm. We did the same thing. How much did you have in debt? I don't know how much it was now. It was a lot. We had like 70000 No, not that much. And we paid it off. <laughs> <laughs> we paid it. We, it was 70000 But we included our cars. Right. So we okay. had four, yeah, that's between that. my husband and I, it was four. we had four cars. Mm-hmm. And we paid everything off in two and a half years. That's awesome. Wow. wow. Yep. We got Gazelle. You know what he says, Gazelle Intense. Yeah, I just so did it on credit cards. So I wasn't talking about like car notes and all that stuff. But we did everything. Yeah. So the you, only thing we owed was our house. You know what? Let me ask you this. Because I see a lot of people... Um, are, are, are trying to make ends meet, and so they tend to start another hustle or something on the side, right? Um, or they get another job or whatever. What do you think, what would you recommend as the best way to generate more income, whether it's a single person or a whole family? It just depends on what what you're good at. I mean, if you have um, something that you're really good at, if you're a good writer, Find somebody you can blog for. Mm. If you're good, um, if you're good with people, find a job that you can do that's in customer services, paying good money. Because there's a lot of online jobs that you can get um, and make extra money. Mm. But what you got to do is you just got to be smart with the extra money. Right. Um, most people, most people have money. Most people have a chance to do a lot of things that they like to do. The thing that kills them is is the small things mm. because I gotta go to Starbucks and I got Starbucks and have that seven dollar coffee eat right. your money. every day. Yeah. Eat their money. I, I, yes. Most people eat their money away. Most wow. of the people I work with, they eat their money away. Yeah, and they spend and people don't realize how much they spend. So what I, the biggest thing to know your spending tendencies is for two weeks. Write down every single pe- <laughs> and I mean <laughs> every penny you spend. <laughs> yeah, and that'll show you you'd where you're being frivolous. I have another another example of, of how to instantly increase your income. Marry somebody rich. I like that one. It, it worked for uh, double, double your income. Megan Markle. Double your income immediately. Man, that changed. That was a that was a that one we can't even. That is an outlier. <laughs> Don't get another job. Get you a man or a woman with a, a good job. I like that one. Um, it's but, true. <laughs> the biz, but marriage is business. People think it's love. It it's is. Not. It is. It definitely well, is. And you don't necessarily have to have one who has a good job. You got to have one who has great potential. Well, and also it, one that's good my with their husband, money. When I first met him, he was working at a company. He was working with Accenture. And they were beating him up, but Accenture doesn't pay their people a lot. I saw his potential. I saw how great he was. Mm-hmm. I went over with him. I did his resume. And he... Increased his salary fifty thousand dollars. Is that black woman magic? It is. That ain't black woman black. magic. That <laughs> is. That is power. Yeah, it's, it's black woman he power. He who findeth, findeth a wife findeth a good thing. We do resumes over again, and folks get better jobs, and they go on to other women. But you know, that's part of the part of your investment. <laughs> Sometimes making a good investment. But I do want. I do want to say that I've learned even just from seeing some of the people I'm around. I read this um, article that said. They looked at the financial um, behavior of like three different guys, right? So one of them was a millionaire, and then one of them was, you know, I think makes sixty or almost a hundred thousand a year, almost six figures a year, and then another one was like struggling, like twenty four thousand a year. So the millionaire said, "I know where every single penny goes." He said, "I'm aware of where everything goes." He's very frugal. He was, I mean, almost to where you would think, wow, this is weird. You know what I mean? Why the person with the most money would have the most frugal attitude about everything. The guy that made six figures, he wasn't as tight on um, on his finances. He wasn't as, as sure of it. And ironically, the guy who had nothing was like, I don't know. Pretty much I'm just here. I don't know where would I spend. You know what I mean? So you saw why the person that had the most money kept the most money and the person that was down here struggling did not. But I, I seen, I've seen people, especially with one of the communities that I, I um, interact with a lot, you know, I like horses. So a lot of the, the, the guys that have a lot of land and property, a lot of these guys worked 
blue collar jobs, but they were smart with their money. They don't spend frivolously and they have their houses paid off, their land, they have a boat, they have motorcycles, they have all this stuff. But it's like they went to a job. Now, they probably were at that one job from the time they were 18 until they're 50, but they're smart with their money. They have stocks, their their home is paid for, their wife doesn't work. And it's like, what is the difference between, but those guys usually live out in the country. They're not involved in Starbucks and that kind of thing. They're not on Instagram or social media. And the guys that are like out partying, dating lots of girls, they're usually the ones that don't, that look like they have more money, but don't save their money. And that guy with the old cowboy boots on in the, the dirty jeans is sitting on. They're not dirty. A lot of them are dirty. I, I have something that I want to, I want to tack on to yours and I want Tammy to kind of answer this. So you mentioned that the person, you said 24,000? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was like, the, a, he was like a fast food worker. The argument that I hear a lot from people is that if you only have 24,000, you're stripped so thin that you don't have money to save. You don't have money to invest in yourself other than just paying your, your bills to, to get by to the next check. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what do you say to somebody who says that I only have 24000 What are you talking about improve my credit? What are you talking about improve my finances? So I've helped people and I've actually helped people on budgets who did have $24,000 mm-hmm. and they were in a better space than some people who made 60000 mm-hmm. because money is Because re- money is relative. It's relative to how much debt you get yourself into. Right. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times what happens with people is they get in so much debt. Mm-hmm. It's the debt that kills you. So my motto is, if you can't afford to pay for it with cash, don't buy it. Don't go to college. Nope. School is different. Oh, okay. School is different, but it's how you think about school. I'm having mic issues It's how you think about school Mm -hmm. And one way you want to think about it is Is a lot of people want their kid to go to the Ivy League school Mm -hmm. And they only want to go there just so they can brag Right Right. No Because when your kid is done with the Ivy League school They got that For a business degree Ivy League debt They got that Ivy League debt So the smarter thing to do Is to go to a school Mm -hmm. in your state Go to a school in your state. Right. Then if you figure out that, you know what, I do need an Ivy League education, at least two years of your school are it's already done, paid right. for, so you're only paying for half mm. of what it would cost. That's Another good. thing to do is when you're in high school, if you're thinking, I'm going to go to college, either do dual enrollment or do AP classes that will give you some college credit. You have to start thinking strategically. And I think the thing that's wrong with the kids today is they don't think strategically because of the family makeup. Right. My answer to your question, like why the men before, why they do this, mm-hmm. my dad's the same way. My kids came to me and they said, Mommy, you know Papa Bird got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I said, I know he chintzy. But... My dad has three cars. Mm -hmm. His house is paid off. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's set. Mm -hmm. But one thing he did is he went to work every day. Right. And because we saw that that's how you you do, that's Mm -hmm. how you work, we go to work every day. Mm -hmm. I I go to work every day. My kids are like, Mommy, why are you going outside the house? I said, you like eating, don't you? (laughs) So that's what you do. Right. And then just... And it's, it's how we train our kids. Today, these kids that are called millennials, it's our fault that millennials are the way they are mm-hmm. because we think, oh, I had a bad life because I cleaned up and I had to pick up and I had to do this. Mm-hmm. So my kid needs a car. They don't have to clean up. Mm-hmm. They don't have to do this. That's why their houses are nasty. Mm-hmm. That's why they go to school and they have a low self-esteem. Mm-hmm. That's why they go to school and they don't get the, the books like they need to. And then they come out or they get an education. They graduate from a college and they go work for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> By the way, Chick Fil A actually is a good company to work for. <laughs> just, just not FYI. when you're not starting you out. Why do you have a bachelor's right. degree? You can right. become an yes. owner. Yeah, well, you can. Absolutely. Any company is a good company to work for if you but, become an owner. But right. Chick Fil A has programs where they actually, if you work there, mm-hmm. I don't think you should go there. You can get a scholarship a if you have to. You can get a scholarship, and then you actually can own your own. You can't own a Chick Fil A if you've never worked there, which I think is admirable. That's a, a awesome model. Yeah. I'm not saying that people should work for Chick Fil A, but I do think that's an issue now. I think that, you know, I have two kids and sometimes we feel like every kid should do the same thing. If if your child is not an academic, if they're not great at academics, college is going to be a waste of a lot of money. Absolutely. <laughs> it's definitely mm-hmm. going to be that. And I think kids need to graduate with skills. I mean, we know people that have multiple degrees that have no job, but you still have to pay those loans back regardless, you know? Yeah. Back and in the you- day, they had the vocational schools. Right. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes yeah, I... I'm not the college type. Mm-hmm. I went, I saw, mm-hmm. I did it, 
says not for me. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that I don't make a six figure income right now. Right. Yeah. But it's all about the it's all about a hustle. Right. You got to figure out which one of you. I'm a hustler, so that's what I do. Right. I'm a real estate agent. Help people with their credit. I love helping people, so it works for me. Interior designer, a little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whatever whatever people need at the time. What's yeah. your need? You fulfill it. So matter of fact, I've seen a lot of people that uh, I feel like credit repair is the new hustle right now. I see that on social media. Yep. What, what what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think you have to be careful because everybody will say, "Oh, I can get that off your credit. I can repair your credit," and they will get it off, and it will go off. Mm-hmm. However, if it is yours. It will come back. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody tells you. It will come back because what they do is they will sell that piece of credit to another creditor oh, and wow. it'll come back on your credit. I see it wow. all the time. So, and Crystal knows how I am because when we did it, if you own it and it's yours, mm-hmm. call them, set up a payment plan, set up a lower payoff, pay the debt because it never comes back. Mm-hmm. It's or just, gone. just wait seven years. Just be patient. That's not, that's not uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> that's not true. Um, the only way it comes off is if if it says charge off. Mm. And I've known people who have stuff over seven years and it hasn't charged off because some people are adamant, I want my money. Yeah. <laughs> mm. You're not going to get away with student this. Student loans don't charge off. Salary no, student loans never, 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 never charge can off. Can you put those in bankruptcy? I don't think you can no, put you those in bankruptcy. No, you can't nope. do that. Let me ask you, because I know there are, if you're like, can you give us tips for like someone that's like in their early 20s and then someone who's in their mid-30s, and then someone who's maybe in their latter 40s to 50s. Like, are there different financial rules or tips for each of those age groups? Because you're in a total different situation. When you're in your 20s, you have the ability to create amazing things. In your 30s, you may have made a few mistakes, but it may be different. And then as you get older, in your 40s, getting ready to be 50, you're probably looking at retirement and your 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 goals are different. So can you give us maybe tips for people in each of those categories? Absolutely. Who, who retires at 40, Crystal? I'm no, sorry. No, I mean, looking towards, looking towards <laughs> retirement. Mine, yeah. That's what I'm looking hey. towards. Yeah, so, real, real spirit. I mean, just, but 60 is not far from 40. Like, nope. once, you, once you start living, the you realize life goes fast. And you're, yeah. I think most people, I mean, I'm, I'm in my early 40s, but I'm thinking like, okay, I need to be figuring out what is retirement going to look like for <laughs> I'm me. I'm motherfucking tired. No, I don't, no, I don't want to retire anytime <laughs> soon, but I do want to know because I've had a family member that had Alzheimer's that we had to take, that we had to provide care for. You want to know what, that, what those options look like, you know? I may have to take care of my mother, you just you know your yeah. your idea your your goals are different at, at forty and then fifty than they are at thirty and twenty. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the first thing I'm gonna actually start at is I'm gonna start with your parents when you're in your house as a teen. Mm-hmm. So for parents, this is what I would say to you for your kids is when they're in your house as a teen. One, you be a good role model for credit. Mm -hmm. Don't get a lot of credit. Don't have so much credit that you're choking, that Mm -hmm. you're always living from paycheck to paycheck because all you do is create frustration in the house and you, and the kid doesn't know how to treat credit. Can can I ask you a question? Because I want to make sure we're clear on this. Absolutely. Don't get credit or don't get debt. So, well, don't get, well, don't get debt, but usually most people get credit to they get debt. <laughs> they use it. I mean, that's... I mean, I, well, I mean, the reason why I asked that was because, you know, with credit card utilization and all that stuff, I think that kind of sometimes helps credit. So it would it would help you and sometimes to get credit and not use it. It One depends thing, on... You know how to no, use it. Nope. So let me tell you that. Okay. So, so in regards to credit, if you get a credit card, you have to use it. Mm. This is where our country... They suck us in. And this is how people start using credit. Because if you have a credit card, and if you've ever had this, chime in and let us know. But if you've had a credit card and you don't use it, you'll start to lose points. Mm. So you have to use it. The only time you don't start to lose points is if you have a strong credit score Mm -hmm. and it it, it doesn't affect you. Like, I'll give you an example. So my husband has a very strong credit score. Mm -hmm. We had a house downtown. We ended up, we had a whole bunch of stuff to go on with this house. And so... The first uh, lien holder, they put it on our credit. Mm-hmm. They put it on his credit. His credit was so strong, he dropped from like an 800 to a 620, 626. Mm. But because he paid his bills on time all the time, and we always paid everything off, five months, he was back to a 750. Mm. Mm. I mean, so even if you have something that brings it down, mm-hmm. if you are if you're a person who's responsible with everything Continue else, to be a good steward. it will it will go back up. Mm-hmm. But with your credit cards, what you want to do is if you're trying to get something, 
credit cards are the thing that's going to help your credit score the most. Mm -hmm. Like people say, oh, I have a car and I have this. That just makes your credit colorful. But Mm -hmm. revolving credit is what helps it move the most. And so what I tell, what I recommend to people is one, you don't have to get a big credit card, get secure cards. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's your money and you control that limit that they're going to give you. So you get a secure card for $200. Mm -hmm. And all I want you to do is I want you to spend $25 every month and I want you to pay it down to 10. I don't want you to pay it off. Because when you're building new credit, as long as you don't pay it off, it'll be registering and it'll help build your credit score. My favorite people to help credit, Mm -hmm. do credit, is somebody who's 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I told my girlfriend, she took her son. I said, teach him to do what I told you. So she had him get two secure cards. Mm -hmm. She put him on one of her cards as an authorized user. He went two months later to get a car. He had a 750 credit score. Wow. He was able to buy a car. He didn't need her. He got it for 0%. Mm. And he had a, and and she, and she talked about, she's like, you know, how much should he get? I said, when he's that young, you want his payments to stay like within the 200s. Yeah. You don't want to go get a kid and have them paying a $400, yeah. a $500. Because I hear all the time people say, <laughs> it's, a, it's crazy. I hear people all the time say, oh, I can make that payment. Sure you can. <laughs> sure you can make you that payment. You told me a little while ago, you know people with $1,000 credit card notes. I know people I with $1,000 car payments. Wow. I know people with $1,000 car yeah, payments. Yeah, yeah, but... They're, those are Bentleys, and they also no, Bentley got not. a collections no. department too. <laughs> no, we were talking about older cars. Those, are, yeah, oh, no, that's people who have bad <laughs> oh, no. credit. You know, they go up in the credit place. Mm-hmm. They have bad credit, but they have to have the Mercedes, right? Or they have to have the BMW, right? right. Or they have to have the newest of whatever it is on the market, right? Mm-hmm. And their credit sucks. Yeah, I know somebody like that. I mean, especially people that are, you know, you we're in a very conscious, you know. Culture, you know, so people are are always trying to do that. I actually talked to you about the car I got because that was a horrible, a horrible decision. I was talked into it by some friends and said because I have a PR agency, I need to have a certain type of car. I got the car, and my car note is definitely not a thousand dollars. I made sure I had a low car note, but my interest rate was high, so it was over a ridiculous number of years. So the guy was like, okay, I said, I don't want my car note to be like over $500. So it's not, but it's a continuous like $550 for pretty much like ever. House, house note? Pretty much <laughs> ever. But, um, and so what I learned with that is that even though that was a car note that I could afford, I could not afford the fact that it was, I'm upside down the car almost immediately. Absolutely. And then it got worse and worse and worse. As in years So, ago. yeah. So, I've made a lot of mistakes just by trying to, not knowing, you know what I mean? Because you think, okay, well, as long, as long as I don't have a, a ridiculous car note, I'll be able to do that. But that's that's definitely not true. And then you end up looking at how much you've paid just in interest. And it's like, I could have had two of these two of these cars. Absolutely. And that's exactly why I got into helping people do credit is because they fall into the same trap. Mm-hmm. They fall into that trap, oh, I can make the payment. But this is my this is my thing to everybody. When you're getting a car, don't just make the payment. Have them show you the amortization schedule mm-hmm. and you want to see what is the final amount of money that I'm going to pay at the end of this loan. The reason why I want you to see it, because when you see all that extra money, it hurts. And if it's not painful, you it's won't painful. change it. Yeah. But once you see that big number, you're going to say to yourself, oh, I could buy two cars mm-hmm. at the price I'm paying for this one. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And when you're like me, when my credit is so good, when mm-hmm. I go into a place... People say, oh, well, we need to see if you're qualified. I tell them, I'm mm-hmm. going to go take a look at some stuff that I want because I already know I'm qualified. Right. I just need to know how much you're giving me. Right. And that's the <laughs> attitude you want to have right. when mm-hmm. you're going in to buy something. When right. I go buy a car, if they give me a 1.99%, if my interest rate is higher than that, I'm mad and I'm not going with them right. because I'm not paying more than 1.99 because I always buy my cars used. Mm-hmm. And so if that's if yeah. that's not yeah. the case... Then I'm not doing it. I derailed you, Tammy. I'm sorry. The question was again that the the twenties, the, the so thirties. Yeah, okay. I, I derailed so, you. I apologize. I don't know. So okay, so twenties. This is what I would say to you if you're in your twenties. If you're in your twenties, I would say get you two secure credit cards, and just put gas on them. Pay it down to ten dollars every month. And I know somebody's gonna say, "Oh my gosh!" But you got to pay. You know, you're gonna be paying money because you're carrying over. It's it's ten dollars, so it's not that much money. But what you're doing is you're establishing your credit, and then you want your parents, prayerfully, they have good credit, mm-hmm. and you want them to put you on as an authorized user to help you. And then you're gonna have a nice seven hundred credit score. What I say to you at that point is, don't screw it up. You have a choice of when you leave and when you get out and you need things. You have the credit to get what you need. 
So when you're in your 30s, mm -hmm. when you're in your 30s, sometimes you made some bad decisions when you're in your 20s. Right. So what you do is you take a step back, and, but you have to change your mindset. You have to decide that I don't have to live like everybody lives. I don't have to have the car that everybody has. I'm a stickler. I, my husband's like, oh, we need to get you a new car. I'm like, no, we don't. <laughs> because I got $3,000 left to pay on this car, mm -hmm. and I'm not getting a new car. Mm -hmm. So what I would say to you in your 30s is change your mindset. You do not have to live up to the Joneses. You do not have to live up to the Kardashians. Mm. You do not have to live up to all those people who you think that, ooh, they're driving this or they drive that. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, anybody can make a car payment. Mm -hmm. Anybody can make a car payment. But you have to decide for yourself what's most important. What do you want out of life? A car is not adding value. And I'm going to tell you a secret, even though I'm a real estate agent, a house is not adding value either. Nope. A house yeah. is just as big of a liability as yeah. anything else. It's the biggest liability. Liability, usually. It mm -hmm. is, but you can make it an uh, asset mm -hmm. if you play your cards right. Mm -hmm. Because when you buy a house, the house is about, it's about you and what you want. So when you're in your 30s, what you want to do is you want to keep your pulse on your credit. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure, I check my credit every month because there is a lot of identity theft out there. And so yeah. you want to make sure if somebody if something happens, you're on it right away. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have no more than two credit cards. You don't need a whole bunch of credit cards. You don't need any more than two. Make sure you have no more than two credit cards. Make sure you use them every once in a while. Once you get into a habit of paying them off every month and you can do that when you're 30, continue that habit. The next thing, when you're in your 40s, when you're in your 40s, it's very important that you get yourself together. Like I'm in my 40s. My husband and I, we just bought another house and mm -hmm. it was it's almost two times what our other house was. Mm -hmm. But I told him, you know what? I'm going to pay this house off in 10 years. He's His eyes got big. He's like, <laughs> okay, how are you going to do that? But you do that by being disciplined. Mm -hmm. So we got a 30-year mortgage because what you don't want, you want to get your mortgage payment the least amount of pos as possible. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I pay extra to the mortgage. Right. And I don't pay it like a mortgage payment. I send a separate check in and I say to the principal, principal. only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that cuts a lot down. Mm -hmm. But when you're in your 40s, you have to have made good decisions in your 30s. Mm -hmm. But if you're in your 40s and you made bad decisions and you're trying to figure it out, the first thing you got to do, clean your credit. Don't do it the cheap way. If somebody tell you, oh, I can clean your credit for $300, I'm telling you right now, they are lying and to you. And it's only saying they can do it for like 40 or 60. I actually had a lady that, that I paid $60 to before I came to you. I told you about that because I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I just got this lady. And first of all, with so much identity theft going on, I'm sure that a lot of these people that are doing credit for $40 and $60 are not being good stewards with your information. So I didn't feel really good about giving her the information. She did my credit for a year. I paid her $60 a month for a year. Wow. And nothing happened. My credit might have went up 10 points, but that probably was from something I did and not what she did. And when I called her and I asked her, she said, oh, well, I'm not chasing you down. Um, to help you fix your credit. Oh. And I'm like, she said, I'm not, I'm not calling you. And I said, oh, well, but I pay you, right. so you should tell right. me what's going on. And she didn't. But I Eesh. think that that's a lot of people's new hustle, their yep. new thing, mm -hmm. is to get people's money and to, and to give them hope. People sell hope. Hope is the most is the biggest selling item in the world. Everybody will pay for hope. And so you tell someone, you don't have to do anything. Pay me $60 and I'll clean your credit. It sounds too good to be true, and it is. It I is. I don't even believe in the debt consolidation companies either, the, the real ones. No, they're, they're B, there's BS. It's the like, it's CCS bankruptcy. thing right. back it's in the day. Like, like, mm -hmm. they're, they're not helping you. Mm -hmm. I have, I have, are you Are you finished with the three the three tiers? Because I have yes. some questions on the go ahead. that I you asked. One, okay, go ahead. Because, well, you had mentioned um, that, like, be buying a house can be a liability and, you know, the way that you buy a car, so on and so forth. Because I've always heard that black people are notorious for making poor money decisions, right? We buy Air Jordans, we buy rims, we buy cars that ain't worth nothing. What types of things um, would you recommend that people put their money into to actually make them money instead of taking it away? This is where I think people should put their money. Real estate is probably the best place to put your money. Really? Absolutely. Real estate is probably... And right now, the market is hot. It's hot. I'll tell you how hot it is. Down in McDonough, I've had this couple. We've been trying to find them a house. Every time we put an offer on a house, it has at least five offers. The day it goes... Like one, we decided we're just going to put an offer in. It came on the market. We put an offer in. The agent called me back. She was like, oh, I got three more offers already, so I need your highest and best. 
That wow. is how hot the market is. And so I say, and there's a lot of people out there, uh, there's a lot of more mature people mm-hmm. out there who want to sell their house and get into assisted living facilities because they're older. Right. Those are great houses to get because you're going to get them for like $100,000, but they're going to be worth well like $180,000. And they're well taken care of. And they're well t- and some mm-hmm. of them need a little work. They'll, they'll need updating. So you're, you're thinking you're going to probably put about 15 in there. But once you do, I mean, you're making good money. And a lot of times, I know a lot of people say, oh, but I can't afford a house, you know, afford to get real estate. Well, that's when you pool your resources. At, and to me, that's one thing as black people that we have a hard time doing. We have a hard time mm-hmm. trusting people and we have a hard time pooling our resources. Mm-hmm. But I'm married to a white guy. They pool their resources all the time. I mean, I look at, um, when you look at internationals who come in from other mm-hmm. countries, yeah. they pull their they resources, pull especially the, the Asians. Mm-hmm. They all live in one house. Yeah. They get 20% money. Mm-hmm. The oldest gets to go out and buy their house. Mm-hmm. They get 20% money. The next oldest mm-hmm. gets to go out and buy their house. And they mm-hmm. set everybody up with mm-hmm. their 20% down. Mm-hmm. And they do that with their businesses, too. Hispanics Absolutely. Do serve. Hispanics do it, too. You serve yep. and someone else. You work for someone else for very little, and then they save up, and then you get the next business. And then people, they all come and work for you. Like, it's... It is, and you're right. We do have, I, you know, I'm sure the whole tap is going to give us some reasons why we have those issues. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm itching. I know. I'm itching because I'm gonna tell you like this. Matter of fact, we it's it's so important to support our own businesses as well, right? And I say that because I've never seen any Asian people in Publix or Kroger's. I have. I have. I've never seen that. I have. I have. I've never. Have. Matter of fact, people have going, talked though. about how people have talked about how Uber and and Lyft uh, have destroyed yellow cabs. You don't really see yellow they taxi have. anymore, right? Mm-hmm. But Not you know enough. what I do see? The Hispanic taxi cabs. Yep. yep. I see those sure all the time. Mm-hmm. They don't. Hispanics don't use Uber and Lyft like Mm-mm. that. Yeah. They support their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and, and even with with the Asians, what I was saying is, they go to the Asian grocery stores. Mm-hmm. They don't go to the one to the mainstream stuff. Mm-hmm. They go where they're where people that look like them. H Mart. Right. I yeah. like stuff H-Mart. like that. Farmers markets. Different. Yeah. Different exactly. farmers yeah. markets. Yeah. 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 So I have a few questions. Go ahead. Okay, so first though, about the pooling the black money thing, there's this new Tulsa fund that's out there. It's and a scam. I know, but and but so many people are investing their money in it. And I don't really? are people really doing that? Twelve million dollars. Twelve well, is that hype? Wow. Is that PR? Or is that no real? twelve million dollars? I hope it's not. That's and, horrible. And I just want people I'm not saying that it's necessarily a scam, but I do want to say that a lot of financial people who are much smarter than me at finances have turned their nose up at this fund. Yeah, and I don't you need take to do that your back research. and not say it's a scam, but I, I, I apologize for that. But I will say, I from someone who lived in Tulsa and has talked to people in Tulsa, it doesn't represent Black Wall Street at, at all, all. Not at all, not Which at all. makes it all already... Do your research. Yeah, yeah do your research. So I don't want to say, I don't want to offend anybody out there to say it's a scam, but definitely do your research. The and SEC been, has already ruled on what it is. If you've been attracted to it because of the Black Wall Street stigma, please know that no, <laughs> that's not a, that's not affiliated with it at all. And there's some there's some definite issues with that. You want to look at how your money is going to be used and how you will be able to be represented in that in that amount. I'm going to say one thing. Bernie made off. <laughs> he made off. Yo. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. And so I don't care what color it is. <laughs> there's Ponzi yeah. schemes out there yeah. everywhere. Right. right. Okay. So I got four questions. You got Go time ahead. for me? I'm ready. Okay. So the very first one is the last thing you were talking about with the, uh, the contracts that go on houses. I have a friend right now and she's in the Slack room. She's trying to buy a house. She says that the moment she finds the house, she makes the call, there's already a contract on it before she can even get to see it. What what tips do you have for somebody who's trying to do that and just seems to keep getting Is she an out? agent? No. She's a you buyer. You said agent or agent? Agent. No. She's a buyer? She's a buyer. Who's her agent? I don't know. It's her that's agent. The, that's the first problem. <laughs> she needs a better agent. Okay. That's the first problem. As a as an agent, so what you have out here is you have agents and you have real estate professionals. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm a real estate professional. And as a real estate professional, you have to be aggressive. You have to be aggressive. So I have a package <laughs> that I put together. When mm-hmm. I send out for my buyer, I have a package. And I'm extremely aggressive. And I tell my buyer, I let my buyers know, first of all, the biggest thing is you got to have some money because you got to come with your own closing costs now because the market is where it is. Mm-hmm. So I tell them, don't ask for any closing costs. There's some tricks that you can do. So you don't ask for any closing costs while you're doing the deal. Mm-hmm. However, after you're in the deal, 
You're about 15 days in, then you say, hey, <laughs> we need some closing costs. Can we just roll into the price of the house? And they'll say, sure, as long as the as long as, the comp- it as long as it's supported mm-hmm. by yeah. the appraisal, you can do it. But you have to have somebody who's strategic. You're mm-hmm. giving away game. No, nope. that was just one thing. Okay. You always give away. Listen, <laughs> you got to get them in. You got to get, get them in. I got to drop the, the candy. candy. Yeah. Okay. I got to drop the piece before lead they come and hit. Lead them to you, yes. Butterfly, I'm going to get you Tammy's information. Because I know she's in Atlanta too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we're gonna we're gonna get your get you a house. Yeah, uh, that's right, butterfly. I'm gonna mm-hmm. take you from being that caterpillar <laughs> to spreading your wings. <laughs> that's what's up. All right. So next question. I had to write them down because I didn't want to forget them. You said with the 20 year olds that they should have um, uh, an adult or their parent. I mean, absolutely. Be a guarantor. Does it matter? Is it important that they pick the parent pick the oldest card they have? That's the card you want. Exactly. Yes. I wanted, I wanted the- you, want the, you want the oldest card because mm-hmm. the thing that works with credit is they're looking at history. They're looking at your payment history, but they're mm-hmm. looking at the longevity of the card. Right. But what they do with the cards, and this is the tricky part, they average them out. So what you want is you want to make sure you get one of their oldest cards because you're opening up two new cards. Right. So once they average it out, it's going to give you a, probably about five years if your parents are older. But it's going to give you, once they get their score, their score is going to be in the 700s. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I learned that by example. So um, uh, the next one was in the 30-year-olds. You said that they should only have two cards. So for somebody who has multiple cards right now, what's the safest way to cancel the cards to get down to two? Whatever you do, do not close the cards yourself. Mm. And I know this personally because I my credit score was so strong, I said, I'm going to close the card. And I accidentally, I had a couple of Chase cards. <laughs> I accidentally closed the one that had the longest years. And it had like five years. I lost 50 points. Ooh. 50 points. But my credit was strong, so I got it back up. So fast. how do you do it then? You let it close itself. So if you have a credit card and you don't use it for two years, the consumer will close it. Okay. Mm. So if the consumer mm. closes it, you're good. If you wow. close it... So just take cut points. it up. Don't t- don't yep. don't do anything. Every to time it, it comes it, in, just keep shredding it up. After two years, they'll close it down. Even if it's got an annual fee, because sometimes they just let those keep rolling. If it's an annual fee card, just close it. You're not going to lose as many points on an annual fee card. Okay. But I would just close it. Oh, actually, let me take that back. I don't like. Cards if you have an annual, annual fee anyway. card, you can turn that annual fee card into one that's no fee. Once you've established your mm. credit, they will change that. You can tell them. You say, "Hey, I have good credit now. Can you just give me a card?" With a um, with a credit limit, they'll switch it over. Okay. After they switch it over, keep it for one year, then don't use it. <laughs> so I, I had a situation, oddly enough, and this is a, this is an additional question I just came up with. I had a bank that decided it was going to do something crazy and close my account, and then open the same account up with another bank. Mm-hmm. Was that City? I uh, maybe. I, I had the same thing. Is that is that legal? It is because it was um it was a points card. It was attached to like the mine happened with City mm-hmm. because uh, I think it was City. Yeah, and they moved to American Express. Oh, okay. So mine did. So what happened was is they had a deal with, um, oh shoot, uh, NBC. They had a whole deal with a hotel. Okay. So you had it was a points card, and so they ended their points deal with that mm-hmm. credit card. Mm-hmm. So that's why they closed it down. They started doing it. I was angry too because mm-hmm. I had seven years on wow. that card. Right. So they start back wow. over at one? <sighs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wow. Uh, last question. So if you're in, you mentioned doing a 30-year mortgage on a house. So for people who bought or who've uh, done 15-year mortgages, what is the best way to refinance that to go to 30 and then pay the extra on it? Or should you just stay in the 15? Just stay in the 15. To stay in the 15. Is there a reason why? Are there penalties that would... Well, so this is what people don't realize when they refinance a home. Whenever you refinance a home, they charge you the closing cost fees again. Again, right. Which people don't see because they tack them onto the end of the loan. <laughs> so every time people refinance a home, they're getting 3.5% swooped back into that, that wow. loan. Because I've had people say, oh, you know, I'm selling my house and I'm not making any money. And, you know, I've had this house for so many years. And my question to them always is, how many times have you refinanced this property? Right. Mm. Because if you refinanced it three times and it was $200,000, that's $7,000. That's $21,000. I said, baby, there's your money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's your money right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you, people just have to be smart. And so, and in this day and time, I hear people all the time say, oh, I'll just get a loan now and I'll refinance it later. 
No, you won't. Because these <laughs> rates are low. They are unprecedented rates. They are low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are low. So when you get the loan, stick to it. And I will say this. You want a good credit score. 640 will get you a house. However, don't just get a credit score to get you a house. Mm-hmm. Get you a credit score that's going to benefit you. You want to shoot for a 680 to a 700. The reason why I say that is because there is a program out there. It's a conventional program. And you can get um, 3%, because normally you have to put down 5% for conventional, but this one is 3% depending on what your income is. And the difference in FHA and conventional... Conventional, once you get 20% equity in your home, you no longer have to pay PMI. FHA, you pay PMI for the life of the loan. So that's like an extra $150 to $200 every month for 30 years for the life of that loan. PMI is, explain it. It's called premium mortgage insurance. So let me tell you, let me explain to you what that really is. Premium, premium mortgage insurance is nothing but a fancy way for the bank to charge you extra money mm-hmm. because you are credit risk, but all it is mm-hmm. is extra money for them. It's no, it ain't no mortgage insurance. Right. It's not something that you're buying. <laughs> right. It's insurance to insure for them right. that if something, if you default to own this loan, they got extra money already. Wow. I'm a veteran, so I don't have to go through any of that stuff. No. If you if you're a veteran, you definitely want to call me. Zero percent. Mm-hmm. You pay zero wow. percent yeah. interest rate. Uh, you, your credit score could be a five eighty, but you gotta have some money. Well, first of all, can thank I say you. that Tammy's my favorite guest so far? Absolutely. <laughs> Tammy definitely has dropped the the big the biggest gems that we've had here. I don't I hope that our listeners will definitely pick them up. You def you want to go again to belegendary.net. We're gonna put the information on our Facebook page and also on the site. So um, you'll be able to go there and click on that if you have questions for her. Like I said, I personally used her. We've been friends for a long time, but I actually came to her and was like, I really need help. And it was something that I was hesitant to do, but I'm so glad I did. And I wanted to make sure that she could come on and share this. We can help other people. Because a lot of times it's not what we don't, it's what we don't know that hurts us more than how bad it actually is. A lot of people, you know, think it's worse than it's actually going to be. So that's the experience I had. So I, I definitely would suggest anybody talking to to uh, Tammy, if you're looking to get your credit fixed or even to get your finance together. And of course, if you're ready to buy a house or if you're thinking about buying a house, BeLegendary.net. Can I say one more thing? Of course. Sure. And I just want to say this to you guys in regards to credit companies, because I know a lot of people like to use Lexington Law, mm-hmm. and there's a company out there, FES, and my company is actually powered by FES. But I don't care what credit company it is. You have to make sure you pull your credit first and you let them know what items you need taken care of. Because if you pull your, if you let them just dispute everything, you could lose points significantly. Mm. Because if they dispute something that hasn't been touched in years, it retros back all the way to that time. And I had a person do that. And I'm and I'm saying this, I'm saying this to black people, to (laughs) black people, because I get this all the time. I'll have somebody come and ask me to help them. I will give them directions. Mm-hmm. They don't follow them. Mm. They go to somebody else to do their credit. Mm-hmm. They lose points, and then they come back to me and say, hey, can you help me? And I help them. Mm-hmm. However, what I'm going to start doing with people who do that, I'm going to help them in my time. Mm-hmm. Because I've given you I've given you all that I have, and when I tell you what you need to do, you need to do what we tell our kids to do when they teach to tell them. <laughs> follow directions completely right. if you want to mm-hmm. be successful. Right. That's for anything. Listen. No shortcuts. Listen. <laughs> All that talk back. I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. fight. Just bait us out there. I'm not gonna pick it up. Mm-hmm. Well, um, great show. I think this is no, a great show. Yeah, I hope. I know it's gonna help some people. This is gonna be the one you rewind a lot of times. I hope you do anyway. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna chop up some snippets and share this stuff to help some folks. You know, that's how you accumulate wealth as opposed to looking like wealth. I actually work on. <laughs> People who have real wealth don't look like it. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Um, I think that us. Well, not us because y'all pointed out that I'm not all the way black. Half, Thank you, Tammy. Half you, half you. Us kind of have a, a big problem with trying to show what we are, as opposed to just being it. So, yeah. Yeah. well, I think we haven't had we haven't had good examples. I, I'll say that we have we haven't we don't know you haven't. We you haven't mean Diddy's not a good example? You know what? It's because we've made people examples who we shouldn't have made. 
because we're looking at True. new money. Yeah. If you look at True. old money, and mm-hmm. old money is the old farmers that you were talking about. That's old true. money is people like my mm-hmm. dad, mm-hmm. people who are not flaunting it, but people mm-hmm. who have their houses paid. Yeah. People, every car that my dad pay, b- purchases, mm-hmm. he pays for it with cash. Amen. He didn't leave Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Because he had his own plan. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That is, and I think I think that and I know we're gonna go, but I think that that's part of part of what we've been trying to get away from is the good stuff. Like we've we've we try to get away from the old way of doing things, but a lot of those old ways were good like whose grandparent my grandfather always had money he didn't spend it but you always knew he had money and then and 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 there was always the you know you know somewhere he got a hidden house or something he's not going to spend it and we've moved away from that so we're now grand what are you you doing you know what i'm doing what are you doing america was greater before i told you we're trying to make america great again this is what i'm talking about my grandparents owned their house yeah they had a job they had money they always had money to give the grandkids stuff Mm. there was a time when america was better for black people and it was before now i'm just saying yeah, but I think as black people, <laughs> though, I think as black people, we have to take we have to take things into our own hands. Yeah, I think I a agree. lot of times we use excuses mm-hmm. to say why mm-hmm. we don't have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, you got a gold tooth in your mouth. <laughs> you got the, the finest kicks there is. Mm-hmm. Your wife is wearing the red bottom Jimmy Choo shoes. Yeah, right. when you those things, mm-hmm. you if you count up all the stuff that you have in your house. Mm-hmm. In, in a house that you're not paying for, that you're renting. Right. right. Stuff that depreciates anyway. Right. If you would have took that money and mm-hmm. put it into a house right. mm-hmm. and bought shoes out of J.C. Penney, it'd right. be a whole different And story. see, I know you're telling the truth because Jimmy, too, don't have no red bottom. I learned that because Crystal <laughs> made us go over to Lushi Wush and shit. What is it? Lubishans. So that's how I know that that's that's an accurate statement. But I think I think the attitude of just people is is so different because I talk to you know a lot of young women that are the surgery. I, so many women are getting surgery, and I'm like, how are you guys affording? Men too, of course. Twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, the, the people did ask about the penis enhancements in the in guys the guys were asking you. <laughs> no, so a few people uh, on our Facebook page asked me to come back and share more about the oh right right they did surgery that, that's a true statement people want to know about yeah, this I'm gonna I have to come back next week I, I'm gonna talk to my friend that had it done and, and bring back the information but surgery I mean women are paying ten to twenty thousand and upwards of that for surgery and I'm asking a lot of women how are they doing that and they're getting a care credit card and they're putting it on care credit and it's like you know as much as I would love to 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 get surgery twenty thousand dollars is enough to really you know Finance my dream you of can change of, your life. Yeah, I you think. can definitely. Is that true, Sammy? Twenty thousand could change your life. It could. You strategically. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have a business, if mm-hmm. you have a business, anytime Flipping. you infuse money mm-hmm. into it, yeah, it could change your. But business even immensely. even buying a house, like putting that money on a house as opposed yep. to in your body, because I mean that's just that's unbelievable. Brick house. Yep. Yeah, the wrong kind of brick house. But you know what? Wrong kind people of brick house. people are interesting. I had a gentleman yeah. say to me one time. He was. Uh, he was living in a one bedroom apartment, paying fifteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Well, if I get a house, I don't want to pay no more than seven hundred dollars." I told him, "I said, you know what, sir? Call me back <laughs> when you talk smart, because right now there's two S's. <laughs> They're smart and stupid, and you're not smart." <laughs> what in the world? But I hear that all. I hear but you could actually time. pay eight, eight, seven, eight hundred dollars for a house. No, mortgage. sir. You no, could. sir. No, where you living? Well, I mean, you could if you put enough money down, or where you living? Right, you could. Yeah, so, eight hundred, eight hundred dollar mortgage, eight hundred dollar mortgage payment. You're looking at about one thirty. Yeah. So that I mean, most people need at least two hundred a house for two hundred thousand, mm-hmm. and so you're looking at about a fourteen hundred dollar um, payment. Right. But yeah. you know what? There's so many people who live in apartments. They're paying fourteen hundred. No, you are. Or the more. apartments are are high right. heck right now. And, and then you I know went, what? Yes, Let, I'm gonna throw this out there real quick here because Crystal's made this this conversation before. Uh, in terms of finances on wedding rings and and the wedding itself, what what kind of thoughts do you have on that? It's a day, so if you want to throw that much money away for a day, that's on you. If you have it to spend, spend it, but don't finance it. Oh, oh, Crystal, I just that's just that's just my thing because I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go into that's like school debt. I wouldn't go into debt for something that you know yeah. you're going into debt and you're gonna be paying off your wedding forever. Mm-hmm. No. Right. Nope. If I'm getting married, when my husband and I got married, we said, okay, how much can we save? We said we can save $1,000 a month. How much is it going to cost us to have a wedding? Mm-hmm. It's going to cost us $12,000. <laughs> so it takes us 12 months to get to, to get that $12,000. Or just go to Justice of the Peace. And well, have, but and have a party at the house. I didn't want to go to Justice of the Peace. Yeah, it depends but, on what you want to do. But if you have mm-hmm. the money, if you're willing to 
to do what it takes to and save the money, right. then right. you do what it takes. Just like here, the Rock of Gibraltar. Love oh, it. Wow. Let's put it up near the camera. The Rock of Gibraltar. See, that's not something that that you just, you know, that's Mm-mm. that's an investment. But this is this is 20 years. We've been married for 20 years. We've had, I don't gave that man three kids, all natural. Amen. Oh, oh. Three kids, all natural. Yeah, I need to be wearing a ring. I need something on my toes. <laughs> yes, you but do. But absolutely. Yes, you do. That's <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful. But this is my third one. Okay, well. So I you ain't start with that. No, mm-mm, I got to upgrade. See, these, these young girls nowadays, they think you're they're supposed trying to, be, to come out they're the They're trying to be Miss Kobe Bryant on the Man. first time. Hey, this is what I say. Whatever you want out of an individual, you have to make sure you're bringing the same thing to the table. That's ooh, true. Ooh, this isn't about finance, but that's that's another one. Timmy is my favorite guest. Hey. I'm just <laughs> I, at first I was kind of weighing it, but Timmy's my favorite guest at this point. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I, I know I'm good. That's good. We're gonna need you to come back in six <laughs> in six months to to do a, a rehash. Evaluate. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, I'll stuff. have some people who I'm working with. And I'll start with them, and I'll share their successes their success. when I come back in six months. Okay, cool. Yeah. That'd be nice. Love it. Yeah. All right. And hey, you know what happened while I, I was? I didn't want to. Is this about basketball? Yeah, man. LeBron, you saw is, that a, too? LeBron is a Laker. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it said. It said LeBron agrees to four-year, one hundred fifty-four million dollar contract with the Los Angeles Lakers. Wow. Yeah, and but but you know what? That's a businessman. But black people, this is what I need you to know. LeBron is one individual. Most of us are not doing that well. Do not pretend. Stop pretending and let's get our money right. Tammy's gonna help us. Yeah. You're not LeBron. Stop trying to dress don't think like about LeBron. It. Yeah, don't yeah. think about don't think about what he just said he's gonna make. It's not it's there not are your so concern. few LeBrons. <laughs> right. Right. Don't matter. I'm a Lakers fan now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I have never That's I would I ain't been a Lakers fan since before Kobe. I would never be a Lakers fan, no matter what. You hey, just turned quicker I'm than he now. did on Drake with the uh, the added on hey, I, I, I go with players, man. Certain players, oh, I just I just God. ride their career out. I'm yes. not gonna call you what you are right now because Tammy's here. I, I can say it in front of Crystal, but Tammy asked me not to be so vulgar, so I'm I'm not gonna do it in front of Tammy. <laughs> yeah, show some respect. Right. We definitely need to have Tammy back. We, we, go, we gonna definitely have Tammy back because if she can get him to calm down, I'm all for it. Only because she's my favorite guest. She deserves it. Right, y'all, we appreciate. Please, please like, share, and, and subscribe. But definitely share this show if you haven't shared another one. You definitely should share this one because we think this can definitely help some people. So um, hopefully, you will take the time to share it with your friends or tune in. If you have questions for Tammy, you can leave them on our page. We'll make sure to get them over to her, um, and of course, we'll have her information up there. And then we'll see you guys next week. Bang.